good to see you again. Tim here at Gamma Vitae, hanging out today under an awning with my little mini demo rack here. Want to show off a product, a long awaited video. These are the rack receivers. Been making these for a long time. Great little product, a lot of applications, compatible with a lot of different racks, compatible with a lot of different awnings, a bunch of benefits. So on the YouTube channel, on the site, I'll put a link down below in the comments and uh, check it out. It's gonna be a good one. So a little history here. I've been making this product now since 2013. I went back and looked and uh, the origin, kind of funny. My friend Chris and I hanging out, brainstorming the solution. And actually he came up with this brainstorm. He's like, what if we made like a little receiver hitch for the racks where I could just slide the awning on and off and I wouldn't have to mess with those L brackets. Cool idea, started to sketch some things and literally that next weekend, I run into Paul from Adventure Tool Company he makes these awesome canvas bags. And he actually had mocked one of these up on his FJ60 rack. He had the welded one inch extrusion up there and then a similar thing on his awning. And I was like, hey dude, that is a great idea and you're never gonna believe this. I've just been talking to this other friend of mine about it. And of course, the first thing out of his mouth is, dude, run with it. I'm a bad guy, I don't care about that, you know? So anyway, give Paul credit. Go to his site, adventuretoolcompany.com, buy some bags, really nice canvas stuff. Uh, Anyway, I thought that was a fun history thing to share. So let's get back into the product here. This is an updated design for 2021. This is what the rack side looks like. So I've got two large slots that are three inches apart. I've also got two pairs of smaller holes for M6 quarter 20s. Those are two inches apart. The idea is to give you a lot of rack mount compatibility for a number of racks out there. I'm gonna show you some examples. So let's talk rack compatibility. First and foremost, start with the Gamma VD rack. Got my little demo guy here, I'm running them on the bottom. I'm holding the world's smallest roof rack. Uh, literally one plate welded to one tube. Get closer, you'll see there's some spacer washers that go between the plate of the rack receiver and the plate of the rack. And that's to allow this piece to run nice and straight out. Uh, you can run it below the rack as I have here, and that's always my preferred. Or you can run it on top of the rack. If you're a real tall guy, you need a little bit more clearance or you've got like a giant rack. You saw the ghost on video I did, for example. That one had to go like this. Uh, all the others I've been able to make work with the, uh, the receivers on the bottom. So they go both ways on the Gamma V. Uh, some of the extrusion racks also, let me show you that. So if you've got an extrusion rack or you built your own rack or you just did a couple crossbars, you bought some 80-20. What I love, I like these 1030 profiles, which is that kind of one by three because Two, two benefits. One's it gives me that center channel that work really well with our towers um, on any truck, but then it gives you this two inch hole spacing that works really well with the rack receiver. So um, again, the intention here was to run that down. Um, it can go both ways, but if you can get or add one of these, uh, these 1030 profiles to your extrusion rack, you're gonna be really happy with how well this mounts up. Now, if you don't wanna go there and you wanna stick with the 1020 profiles, couple options. One is either add or move one of those next to the other so that you can again achieve that same two inch or if you feel like it three inch hole spacing. So this mounts up so if your rack allows you to move them or it allows you to drill holes and add one, uh, here's a nice way you can make this work with your extrusion rack. So again compatible with Prinsu, Uptop, Pro Speed, Bowfin, uh, Victory, Rockman, Sherpa, if I forgot somebody, let me know in the comments. Point being, um, these bolt together extrusion racks and these rack receivers are gonna play well together. Maybe you bought a tray rack, like uh, a Rhino, Front Runner, one of those. So yeah, here's the edge of a Rhino rack. And here we are bolted up. I just used a fender washer here, some of Rhino's hardware. And uh, yeah, straight bolt up. Unfortunately, it has to sit on top. Um, one of the disadvantages of those tray racks, but again, compatibility is absolutely there. Um, you know, my intention was make this as universal as we could, keep it practical. So um, a lot of uses there. Of course, if you have a specific application, let me know. I'll do my best to kind of work with you and see if it's gonna work out for you. Moving on to the awnings. So yeah, we're slotted here. So you have a lot of, uh, oops, excuse me, a lot of adjustment. A lot of flexibility there. So this is gonna work with 
boy, ARB, CVT, Tapui's, Ironmans, you know, the, the smaller Rhino, Sunseekers, Dome Awnings, those really only need two of the rack receivers. Bigger ones, up to the Rhino Batwing like we're doing here, or 23-0, Overland Vehicle Systems, Overland Pros, Darche, I think those are all the same, right? Um, so that's the largest I would go. On those bigger ones, I always recommend doing three of these just to give you a little bit of support. Basically, any awning that uses legs should work well with this product. If you get into those legless awnings, um, I'd probably go with a more rigid mount system and I've already got another bracket for that. So a lot of compatibility. Point being, it should work with your awning, should work with your rack. One other tip I'll give you for when you're doing three sets of the rack receivers is on the back one and the front one. You'll see I'm engaged all the way deep on that second hole, but on the middle one, I'm engaged only to that first hole. Let me show you what that looks like when I go ahead and put the awning on. So hopefully I got the angle right for you to see, but what I'll do is put the awning up over my head here, and then I can just line up the very front rack receiver like that swing the back end and then those can engage I can actually leave it like that so I've got about an inch of engagement front and rear before that middle one comes into play it's a little easier to just line up two than to try to do all three at the same time so that's why I like to offset that middle one here's a bat wing awning on an FJ 40 rack see all three mounts Mounted on top, because the 40's a little short, one of this tall. On the back two mounts, you can see those are pushed all the way into that inner pin, and I've got the slots to where those are pushed in pretty far. And that's to allow this front one to have a little twist to it. It's also on that outer hole for the pin, so even with the taper of that 40 rack, we can get all three mounts to line up. Sunseeker awning, simple two mounts. So you can see the back one, similar deal. A little bit more of an extension here where we're using that first hole on the front second hole in the back keeps the awning parallel to the 40 but also allows us to incorporate the taper of the 40 rack so there you go there's mounts on a 40. now benefits of using this product i there's a few of them and i'll just i'll point out that my favorite ones the best one is it's so easy to take the awning off when you're not using it that it's almost inexcusable to leave it on there all the time your bag's going to last longer no one's going to take it it's not a dweeb magnet when you're at the mall. Look, you don't need an awning at the airport. You don't need it at your kid's soccer game unless you're gonna deploy it. So keep it out of the sun, keep it out of sight. It's gonna last a lot longer. Other thing, say I have other gear on my rack, or maybe I have a rooftop tent and I gotta fold that over and I gotta stuff all that fabric and get that zipper. These awnings are a wall. They're in your way when you're doing that. So having the ability to just be able to quickly take it off, set it on the ground, deal with my other rack stuff and then grab that awning and slide it right back up in there. That's huge, man. It's gonna save you a ton of time and a ton of aggravation when you're out there. So I really like those two benefits. The other one, if I can run it down, I'm going to because again, I like to keep the top of my rack clean. I wanna be ready to go out. I wanna go camping, but every weekend is not camping. Sometimes I gotta move a mattress. Sometimes I go get a Christmas tree. Sometimes I gotta go yard sale, bring something home, who knows? I get lumber a lot. I need to move drywall occasionally, plywood. So tops of my racks generally are nice and flat. I'm still prepared to add that awning really in just a few seconds now that I've got all my receivers set up. So those are the benefits I really wanted to highlight there. Back to the gamma VD racks. If you're running a roof, I'm sorry, rain gutter rack, so 60 series, 70, 80 series, you can run these down. And the way to do that is you just have to share the plate. So you wanna slide your tower over to this outer set of slots here, and then you can use these guys for your rack receiver. So there is room for that if you wanna run it down. Of course, you could run it on top too, you'll have less uh, interference issues. And then if you're running a roof channel rack, so any of the Lexuses, 4Runners, of course, all the later model Land Cruisers, 100 series, 200 series, uh, they're compatible, they all go down. And in most cases, especially in back, you're gonna be using the inner slots here and the outer slots for the, uh, the rack receiver. So, um, you know, a lot of room to play together there. Uh, occasionally there's an interference issue. I'll show you how to resolve that here. So here's the solution. You're basically gonna just share 
a bolt with two products. On one of these for the rack receiver, you know, I got my same spacer washer. Uh, on the other one, what I've done is I've added a stack of washers to compensate for that little gap that I need. I'm also using the actual tower as part of that spacer as well. So the goal being, I wanted this still to be a nice flat surface and planar with the main plate of the rack. Uh, but you can build up some washers and do that there. This is really common if uh, front of the 100 series, front of a LX or GX, excuse me, uh, you're gonna see that solution is gonna come to play. Uh, if you ever have a clearance issue or an interference, you know, that's how you would resolve that. You're just gonna wanna share one of those longer bolts. One of the neat benefits if you do a four plate rack on the Land Cruisers, is you're gonna get a lot, you're gonna get another one of these up front. So you'll have a lot more flexibility on where to mount that, that forward facing uh, rack receiver. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful to you. So on my rigs, notice I've actually got an awning on the other side of the rack also. I do offer the, uh, the rack mounts, awning mounts individually. So if you wanted to add another pair of rack mounts per se, it'll allow you to move one of those pull out awnings to either side of the truck. So you don't necessarily have to decide driver side, passenger side. You can wait until you set up and then just move the awning to the side that suits you the best. Another thing that's kind of cool, you can swap out awnings, you can swap out other equipment. You're not just limited to awnings. So I could pull this sun seeker off and then I could grab this shower enclosure and stick it right off them in there. So it gives me a, a bunch more options. And I'm not saying buy every awning and every shower enclosure you can find, of course, Welcome to it, happy to sell them to you. But you know, your buddy's probably got one. Maybe you're going out together. Maybe you want to swap rigs. Maybe you want to just try different equipment. These mounts really make it easy to just swap these things back and forth. And the other thing is, I mean, you got a nice flat plane here with a couple slots in it. So come up with something else. I've had customers make tool mounts where they've put quick fist clamps on here, even built a little tray. So they have a shovel and an ax and a saw. And it's all one thing. They just put it on there and now they go, and then when they get home, they just pull it off and hang that up. Really cool solution. I've had other customers do uh, water tanks, you know, like a road shower, that kind of thing, or a homemade one out of PVC, where they found a way to just kind of mount these there. That's worked out for them. So you can get creative with this. The idea is it's just a quick and easy solution for quickly adding and removing accessories from the side of your rack, and hopefully in a way that doesn't interfere with the stuff on top of your rack. Now, one question I'll get on these thinner racks is, since this is so big with these slots, if you end up with a little extra slot down here hanging down, people will ask me, should I cut that off? My answer is if you want to, but I wouldn't rush out to do that. As long as you don't have any door clearance issues, and you're not hitting your head on this thing, it's not really hurting anything. I've seen people use this like on the shower enclosure. They'll hang up their little shower caddy from that. Really nice handy spot for that. Or I've seen people with the LED strips under the awning really nice place to do that or just kind of hooking a coat there to let it dry off so sometimes having a little place to hook something isn't a bad move so you know use that um, of course you want to cut it off cut it off it's your thing and I think with that we'll wrap this up I believe we covered the big points again compatible with a lot of different awnings out there from the real skinny ones single slot double slot even the real wide ones uh, really tried to make it work with a wide range of awnings Pattern with a lot of different racks. Gamma BD rack, of course, straight bolt up, tray racks, rhinos, they work. All your little extrusion racks, you guys with the bolt together 8020s, you can find a way to make those work with either a two inch or a three inch wide slot pattern there. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for being with me. I just hit 500 YouTube subscribers. It was never about the numbers, it's really been about adding value to uh, the sport we love. and. Also, you know, sharing a little bit more deeper dive into some of our products here at Gamma Vidi, but that's awesome. Glad that you guys are liking this. Thanks for telling others about it. Thanks for being with me today. And let me know what else you want to see. See you on the next one.